Good okay. morning, class. Good morning. My name is Pam Turner. I will be the moderator for this morning's lecture. Welcome to another lecture presented by the Tampa class. This is a school, not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States and certain other foreign countries. The Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce to you the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joel Turner, and our President, Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It is then erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles, not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many, but we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or an encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We've drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be read, or can be, um, had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in the school, we teach about the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses to taunt Mount Sinai, and he showed him the tabernacle pattern and the vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure 
and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The ten primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, both practical and occult, science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was, which was once delivered under the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name, given among men, whereby man can be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. <clears throat> Our class will be dedicated in prayer by Dr. Carol Miller. And um, I don't think we're doing a musical selection. I think Lisa's out of town this weekend. Um, the scripture reading this morning is 2 Peter, the third chapter. We don't have a board today. <laughs> so that's 2 Peter 3. That will be read by Dr. Sherry Williams. And our leaders this morning are Dr. Sherry Williams and Dr. Darlene Lester. Concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering 
to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conduct and righteousness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of Yahweh, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent, that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. And account, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and account that the long suffering of our Savior is salvation, even as our beloved brother and Saul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from our own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Redeemer and Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. To him be glory, both now and forever. That was Second Peter, the third chapter. The first speaker will be Dr. Anthony Hall. Appeared to bring them out of the land of Egypt. When I say appeared, 
to bring them out. Moses did not bring them out. Uh, let's get Luke 24 25. Luke 24 and 25. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning so himself. So God's Messiah, after his death, their resurrection, said beginning at Moses. This was uh, approximately 1,500 years before this happened. And he went all the way back approximately 1,500 years ago to show that these things was about him, himself. And I say himself. We learn down here that himself is Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim, and God the Messiah, which is himself. Can we get over there when, um, when Abraham was about to outwork his son? And Yahweh said, I will be the sacrifice. So we go back to the law and we have to go back to the prophets. For one reason, Yahshua did. Dr. Kennedy's is just confirming the things that Yahshua did, you see, or what the law and the prophets said. He didn't, his vision didn't come up with nothing new. It came up to confirm what was already been taught by Yahshua and then by the apostles after the day of Pentecost. So it's nothing new. It was just a revelation that Yahweh had mercy to have upon this man. So we would have, he would have mercy on us to understand it. Genesis 22, and I have to pick it up. Yes. Okay, at one. And it came to pass after these things that Yahweh did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which Yahweh had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. It's coming up. And Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son. Yahweh will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. That's what I wanted to pick up. Yahweh said uh, he would provide himself. See, Yahweh himself died, took on shape and form, you see. This was a death. I know I'm getting way ahead of myself, but Yahshua, Yahweh himself, took on shape and form that was like into a death before he created all things. Can we, I don't know if we can find it, but Yahshua said it's in, uh, that he created all things. Um, I'm not sure that's that. Yeah. Give credit to Yahshua by creating all, creating all things. Uh, it's, it's pretty clear how he said it. Yahweh take on shape and form and then he creates all things. So them all things include our, ourselves, you see, include our souls, you see. So he's our true parent. Whether we didn't know that, and it takes Yahshua himself to show us that he is our true parent, you see. Because our true self is not these physical bodies that we have walking around. Our true self is that soul that Yahweh has given every man. Uh, so Yahweh himself, through Yahshua Messiah, Said, go back to Moses. And we go back to Moses, we find out 
that Moses was born under a death decree with Pharaoh at Pit out. And you have to keep in mind this this this, this history, that word history, we learned that his story is being told. Yahweh's story is being told. So we go back to Yahweh's story according to the prophets and the law, and we find out Moses was born a death decree. And Moses was rose, raised up as an Egyptian, but he was not an Egyptian, you see. Moses was a Hebrew because how, how, how we know that is because back here with Abraham, he was, he was, he was told to circumcise and their, their children on the eighth day. So we know Moses was at least over eight days years old, you see when he was rescued out from this death decree, because he was circumcised. And we watched the movie, if you watch the movie, you find out that they put a coffin there, and this is how they recognized that Moses was a Hebrew uh, child. But they're coming down to school, we realized how they, how they really knew, is because they knew he was circumcised. So Moses was, was rescued by Pharaoh's daughter, and keep in mind, Pharaoh was the same one that got the death decree, ended up raising Moses in his household, which is eventually going to be the, the, the messenger to deliver the people that, Moses, that Pharaoh had intended to kill. So Yahweh's story is going on from the beginning to the end. In all these scriptures about Yahweh Messiah, who is, who is Yahweh himself, manifesting in the flesh to carry out his purpose. So now Moses is rescued or resurrected uh, from a death decree. And he, and he lives in the household of Pharaoh. But keep in mind, Moses' own mother nurtured him and she was paid wages to do this. Now I don't I don't you don't read that Moses was still in contact with his mother, so we don't know how long that lasted. But we do know Moses had to recognize that he was a Hebrew because he was circumcised. So Moses in his heart had sympathy for his brethren that was in bondage. And one day Moses seeing an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew. And for the love of his brother, you see. They don't need to come to God's Messiah. He smite the Egyptian, you see, and save his brother's life. That wasn't a murder, see. That was a self-defense for his brother whom he loved, you see. And the next day, Moses sees two of his own brethren quarreling among each other. And the one in the wrong said unto Moses, Are you going to kill me like you did the Egyptian yesterday? Now that Moses knows that the word's out, that he has killed the Egyptian, you see, so no, now Moses know that he can't not go back down here and live that life he had no more, you see. So Moses flees, you see. And while Moses flees, and keep in mind Moses was 40 years old, so he, he was raised down here for 40 years. And then what, I guess 40 years later, is that correct, when he, when he appeared out here? 40 years later when he took on the wife. So 40 years later, Mo Moses... Uh, Takes a long, uh, he, he marries a uh, uh, oh, so cord, right? And, and and now Moses is now he's now keep in mind Moses is down here living pretty good. You see, we might have a Lexus or Cadillac. Like he had a nice <laughs> cherry. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> he was living good. The point I'm making. So so now Moses life changes tremendously from a rich man to a shepherd. But Moses is content with this new life, you see. But see, Yahweh got a purpose. Moses thinks he 
in his mind, he's going to be a shepherd and have family and live ever after. You see? But Moses, Yahweh has a purpose. So Moses, one day while he's attending his flock, he sees a phenomenal sight. See, Yahweh's purpose is working from the beginning to the end. Let's get that when Moses sees this phenomenal sight. That bush burning and not being consumed. Yes, I'm answering this. Is Exodus 3 and 3. Now Moses kept his mouth to Jethro, his father, and his father, Lord, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert, and came to the mountain of Elohim, even to Horeb. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire, out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see the great sight. Why the bush does not burn. And when Yahweh saw that, he turned aside to him. Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, and he said Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes, off thy feet, because the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the Elohim of thy father. The Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, the Elohim of Jacob, and Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Elohim. And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. And I have come down to the, to deliver them out of the land. Of, Stop you right there. I'm sorry. So, Mo, so Yahweh Himself is appearing to Moses in this burning bush, and He tells Moses, "I have come down, and I know their sorrows, I know their pains, and I will deliver them, not you, Moses." Yes. But Mo, He sent Moses back down. But Moses, no, when he get down here, he is a bit of a dead man. Because of the of the of his dependent brother. So Moses asked Yahweh for some our encouragements, some signs, and, and he gave him signs and wonders. And he told Moses to take your hand, Moses, and you put it in his bosom, and it came out of leopards, you see, a disease. And he told Moses, put the hand back in his bosom, and it came a cure. Uh, that was the I S I. Look at over there. This is I I S I am. Where the world think is I am that I am, and, but it's truly I S I am. So Yahweh showing that He is I S I. Or He will be the pure. He will be the disease. You see, He will be whatever He will be, and He He will be this creation for a purpose that show forth Him. So now Moses gets given given some confidence that. Well, he can go back down here because he's he's instructed by some some Yahweh who has shown him some mirac miraculous wonders that he knows is not of a man. So he goes back down to Pharaoh and tells Pharaoh, Yahweh have sent me, let my people let his people go so we may worship him. You see. It wasn't just delivered for to go care on their own regular life. See, it wasn't. It wasn't say deliver them now, let them go have families, let them build a career. No, so they can worship me. It's a purpose, and we're down here for that same reason to worship Yahweh, Yahweh. Did you want that, Yeah, you can read it, please. Okay. And Moses said unto Elohim. No. I am sorry. This is Exodus um, 3 and 14. And El 13. And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and, and shall say unto them, The Elohim of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And Elohim said unto Moses, Aya Asher Aya. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I will be, have sent me. See, Yahweh 
saying right there that he was he was he was the big appeared as a burning bush. And we always say if we was there when Moses seen the burning bush, we wouldn't have saw that but a, a a a bush, and it wouldn't have been burning. Because this was happening in the compound of my, Moses' mind. He was having a vision and revelation, you see. And that's what we need in portion, you see. Just a little. So now Moses was told to go back down, and I lost my train of talk, to go back <laughs> and tell, um, uh, when he, well, he told Mo, he told Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said, I don't know no Yahweh, and neither would I let him go, let the people go. But after ten devastating plagues, Yahweh would harden Pharaoh's heart and soften his heart. And the last one, he hardened Pharaoh's heart. And the tenth plague has always been a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, history for me. When I first attended class, I've been in our class many times, many years. And it's one of the things that caught me, and I could not refute it, that Tim plague. And I had always heard about the story, I wasn't a religious person, but I always heard about the story of Joshua being on his cross. And never, I was never right. I've been back to church maybe one time in my life, twice even, maybe not even that. But this is one history that I heard that just hit me, threw me in the back seat. <laughs> uh, I back this man. He was told that tenth plague. Moses was told by Yahweh, who I always he always put the mountain. I'm on the story how the dean brought it out that Yahshua himself was in a tent back here. You see, not even in a cloud. Well, he did appear sometimes, but this particular time, the Pharaoh to put this tent down here. To show forth that Yahshua himself was giving him them, them tenth plagues. Crowd that tent. Every one of them, Yahshua himself gave Moses in a tent, you see. Because every time Moses would go down here, Pharaoh would soften his heart. Yahweh was soften his heart, it hardened. And Yahweh, Yahshua would go back to that tent. Say, hey, Joshua, <laughs> Pharaoh was not letting the people go. And he with that last plague, Joshua told Moses to, to do. And this time he said, Pharaoh would surely let him go. And this was that tenth plague. And this plague, in particular, describes in detail how Joshua died. Died. And according to the scriptures. And he was told to take a lamb. And we know Yahshua was called the lamb. And it was the pierced lamb inside. We know Yahshua was pierced inside. And it was take the blood of his lamb. And strike the lintel of the door. So we know. And strike the side post in the basin. Which they did the front. This is phenomenal witness right here. And the world has read it a thousand times. But only it takes Yahweh to reveal this to us. To that divine vision revelation. So now, the children of Israel has the lamb in them, you see, and the blood on the door. And the deaf angels pass over. And why was that called the Passover? You see? Because the, when Joshua was on the cross, the soldier, he broke the legs of the, it was three. He broke the legs of one, and he passed over Joshua. You see? And he breaks the legs of the other. So this Passover was all about Joshua, you see. 
So now they have to take a three day journey to and through the Red Sea. And when they get to the Red Sea, they start crying to Moses. And Moses says, turn aside and see the salvation of Yahweh. See, he was always, he was always talking to the salvation, you see. Yahweh chose Moses. See, his salvation was right there with Moses. See? He was right there all the time, you see. So he tells Moses, just stand still, you see, and, to, and, hang, and raise your rod, you see. And this phenomenal happened, phenomenal history. His story phenomenally divides the Red Sea and the children three day journey through the Red Sea. And the three days <coughs> are pointing out is Joshua's three days death, burial, resurrection. Again, they when the last that last soul, see, when that last soul over here, Yahweh closed that thing. It's like when that last soul is over here, this is what's going to happen. And then this can happen. This got to happen before this happens. So that last soul crossed over, and Yahweh closed that Red Sea and busted them asunder. Now they're here to worship Yahweh. And this was foretold to Abraham before it happened. That his seed was sojourner in a strange land, but I would surely visit them, and I would surely deliver them after approximately 20 years so they can worship me. Keep that in mind. Yahweh had one purpose for them when he brought them out, is to worship him. And that's and that stands today. He brought us here. To, to, he brought us here for what reason to worship him. So now Moses gets out here in, in the land in the, to worship Yahweh. And Yahweh tells Moses, tell the children of Israel, clean up the, I think the third day and I should speak to them. Wash their clothes, clean up, you see. So there's a cleaning going on, you see. And that's what has to happen to each and every one of us. And I speak to myself, personally. So now, Yahweh tells Moses, come up to the mount, you see. And Moses rose up, and we know from coming down here, he didn't go alone. The same one that gave him the ten, the ten plagues, you see, because he was supposed to come by himself. And you do some reading, you'll find out Yahshua was there with him. So Moses was up and Yahweh spoke this law. And you see from this drawing, Moses is up a little a lot higher than these people. You see that? This this material, this pictorial illustration is written out in a divine order. See, everything on here is in a divine order. Some things we understand, some things we don't. But believe me, it's in a divine order. That Moses is seeing. See, see? See, his, his, see how his understanding, when you look directly at something, your understanding is more clear than this, these people. See how far he's looking? See, he's looking directly at what's going on. This is Yahweh's purpose and Yahweh's under. Mercy. So Moses, while Moses is up here, and the seventy elders and, and Aaron, they have to die. Yahweh, they see Yahweh out of them, but they don't. They're not getting understanding. See, Yahweh, Moses is getting understanding. Here, you see, and we know that. That's why we go back to Moses. Yahweh was dealing with him, showing him his purpose. So it's a reason to go back to Moses. See, Moses was elevated. That's why we go back to Moses. Yahweh was dealing with him in a divine purpose. So, Yahweh speaks down these laws and commandments and judgments to the children of Israel. And they say, all the Yahweh say do, we'll do. And we know that didn't 
fight happened because they built a golden calf, you see. Because Moses, keep in mind, Moses was up there 40 days. So they, and all they see is a fiery child up here. Moses must be burned up. <laughs> his old, his old elder, him burned him up. So let's make something. See how easy it is to go to our own understanding? Because we don't understand y'all with purpose. Let's make something. And we give that the credit to everything that was done. And so, Mo, so they, they, they offered up and built a golden idol. And Yahweh said, and Yahweh said, and Yahshua, I'm going to keep it real. Yahshua said unto Moses, I hear more a noise in the camp. And it's not a worshiping me, you see. They're having a good time, but it's not according to my purpose, and it's, and it's, and it's definitely not worshiping me. So if, you ain't, we ain't worship, if they weren't worshiping him, they got to be worshiping something else. And the purpose was to come out here and worship him. But see, the thing is, they didn't know the purpose. And it was Yahweh's purpose that they didn't know the purpose. That's him himself. You see, after this, we have to show the purpose. You see, the purpose was not revealed until the death, burial, and resurrection, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So, Moses was sent back down. You see, after you got to realize, Moses was in a heavenly state up here. And he don't know what's going on down here. See, he's not participating, and he don't have an idea. So when he comes back down, he he breaks he breaks the stone because he can't understand why are these people acting like that. You see, he's been, he was in eternity up here with Yahweh. You see, but in no time. You see, and he he breaks the stone because he can't see why these people act the fool. After being delivered out of some slavery and bondage. And he breaks the stones, showing forth that that's the Old Testament, the Old, the old Covenant, see? The Old Covenant would be broken, see? And there would be a new covenant. And that's the body of Christ Jesus understand that and be able to ask the questions for their understanding. 
because it's about them understanding it, not us, you know? And oftentimes uh, with some of my kids, you know, the older ones, I'll say, well, I already know this. You know, it's for you to learn it now, you know? So, um, so you know, the, that concept or that theory about not being able to ask God, you know, um, a question uh, just doesn't, didn't make any sense. And now, you know, here, and, and the first speaker brought it up, where Moses had a very, very, very important question to ask God. You know, and um, you know, and it's interesting because actually, you know, also in church, I had asked, I didn't understand, there was no resemblance between Lord God and Jesus, you know, but it couldn't be explained, and this is where I was told, well, you can't ask questions because, of course, they couldn't answer the question. So they're not going to, you know, anything they run across um, that they can't answer, that's, that's the standard answer you're going to get, well, you don't question God. You know, so, but the first thing you talked about, you know, when Moses asked God, you know, for his name, and Yahweh went about to explain, first of all, the meaning of his name, um, Aya Asha Aya, I will be what I will to be. And from there he gave Moses his name. And that doesn't change. <laughs> Let's pick up the scripture reading. Second Peter, the third chapter. This second epistle, beloved, I am now writing unto you, both of which I stir your pure mind by the way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of Yahshua Messiah. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. Yes. And saying, Great is the promise of his coming. Mm -hmm. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were for the beginning and of the creation. You look out here in this world, and you know, I, I often think to myself, just when it can't get any worse, it gets worse. There's not an event, not a day, not a minute, not a minute that goes by without some violence in this world. Kids being killed, two years old. You know, um, just all kinds of things going on in this world. So here you would say, where is the, where is the Messiah? You know, where, when is he coming? You know, not realizing he's already here. And he has a purpose and a plan of salvation, but he also created that mystery of iniquity to oppose and, um, let's see, I'll pick point here, to oppose all that is Yahweh. So this mystery of iniquity is running rampant. And also, um, oh, let's get, um, there's no knowledge of him in the land. My people perish. That I want to for lack of knowledge. But also, um, there's no knowledge. I don't know if that's the same scripture or not. It is? I think. And people, you know, that they don't want the truth. Because you, you're trying to tell someone, as we all have attempted to do, friends and family, and it's not that they want the truth. Go on. Uh, did you find it? Proverbs 29, 18. Okay. Where there is no prophetic vision, the people perish. The people perish. So out here in this world, things are just, you know, they would seem chaotic. They would seem in this state and condition of just chaos. But it's not that way. Yahweh has a pattern or a plan of salvation. And he's going about to carry that out step by step and methodically. You know, and it doesn't change. And I was thinking this morning, actually, um, you know, um, I, I think I mentioned this before. You know, math is a subject that I like. And there are just four basic math operations. Four math operations. And there's nothing else. It doesn't change. Those math, and you can turn them around and do this, and you have the uh, quadratic equation and all this stuff. And don't think I'm smart, I'm not. These are just things I remember, you know, because I don't get into that now. But, but I like math, you know. And so, um, but <coughs> it, it doesn't change. Those principles do not change. And that's why I think I like math so much, because it was concrete. 
You know, it didn't change. English is all messed up, especially the English language. <laughs> you know, I don't even know why they really even teach it. Because you you know, how are you supposed to teach the, a predicate and a subject and a, you know, all this, you know, and then that changes. You know, and then nothing stays the same with that. Nothing. You know, you have a rule, but, 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 but. There's a, it's not like that with math. Math is solid and concrete. And that's how your founder is. You know, I am Yahweh and I change not. So therefore, we don't have to be confused. We don't have to be tossed to and fro. We don't have to wonder, is it this way or is it that way? Because Yahweh stands on how on his pattern or plan of salvation. And it hasn't changed. So we'll go on a little bit more. So there's scoffers and all this in the world. Um, go on. You want Hosea. Okay, thank you. Thing. Hosea, yes. Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy Elohim, I will also forget thy children. Mm -hmm. So read that again for me slower, okay? Hosea 4 and 6. Okay. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. And because they have rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Now we have this world, and you think of the brilliant minds out here. You know, scientists are exploring now ways to go to Mars. They want to go to Mars. They want to set up, and what did the guys say, the astronauts? They had the astronauts on a talk show the other day. Um, a couple years, they were planning to go to Mars. Um, yeah. And they want to try to build the civilization. They're going to Mars to build the civilization on the moon, I think, actually. To try to build, yeah, build, you know. So what? what is it? <laughs> I'm sorry? I said they know this is going. Yeah, and why is it going, though? They done messed it up. But, but you know, you, but you think of the brilliance of, of mankind and mind. You know, and someone got into this recently, you know, about knowledge, you know, with Yahweh. He makes foolish the wisdom of the wise. But you're, the people are destroyed for lack of, of knowledge, but it's lack of knowledge of him and his um, divine nature and attributes and his purpose and pattern or plan of salvation. That's the knowledge that he's talking about. Because if you look out in the world, there's a whole lot of knowledge out here. You know, people are building and doing things and they're finding cures for cancers and sicknesses and illnesses, you know. Yet, yet and still, you know, you still have homelessness. You still have people hungry. You still have, you know, I mean, it's such a contradiction out here in the world, you know. So, but Yahweh has a purpose and a plan of salvation. And people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they don't want to know. And there's a scripture that, Joel, you get some, a lot of times that they don't want to know. They don't want to know. Do you know where that is? Um, they don't want to know it. <laughs> you got me on the spot. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a scripture you get, and I know it if I'm sitting here in the seat. I should sit down. But um, so it, it go on again, a little bit more in, in Peter. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Second Peter three and four. I just mm -hmm. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? Uh -huh. For since the fathers fell asleep. All things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. That's what they figured at the beginning of the creation. You know, um, there was there was chaos going on. Isaiah thirty and ten picks it up. Okay. I don't know if it's the right. I one. don't know either. That doesn't. Okay. But oh, go on, please. For this, they willingly are ignorant of. They willingly, they willingly are ignorant of. That by the word of Elohim the heavens were of old. And the earth standing out of the water and in the water, by which the world that then was, then overthrown of water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But behold, be not ignorant. Of this one thing, that one day with Yahweh is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. 
be not ignorant of that. It's Peter um, talking here. Uh, one day as is with Yahweh is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. And we have this chronology chart that shows time and Yahweh's time. You know, we have different ages and dispensations. And uh, Yahweh goes about to establish time throughout the creation here um, during these days of, of creation, the seven days of creation. You know, when he establishes time here when the children of Israel actually, when he put them down here in bondage and he brings them up out of Egypt, he says, this month shall be the first month of the year to you. So he's establishing a time down here with the children of Israel. Days and times and seasons are established with Yahweh. And also through the days of creation here, these seven days of creation. Um, so here Yahweh's purpose and pattern and plan is running throughout creation. And what is that? Salvation. Yahweh's, it's right in his name, Yahshua. Yahshua is salvation. And we have it here. Yahshua. And his purpose was to come in, to die, bury, raise again the third day, and do all of this according to these scriptures. And this carries on to this very day, the, uh, these principles. So let me go back here with the children of Israel, as the first speaker was talking about. So Yahweh puts them down into bondage, and he had already promised Abraham that he was going to bring them up with a mighty hand. He was going to do this. And he, he was doing it all. So there was nothing really for the children of Israel to do but believe. Believe on him. And they couldn't do that. And that's what Yahweh is showing them here through these ten devastating plagues. They did not have faith. They could not believe. They did not. Um, and, and Yahweh set this up that way. So they're down here in Egypt. They're in bondage. They're crying out to be delivered. Yahweh, and this is the thing. I don't want to jump ahead. Yahweh gives them a means of escape and brings them out here to the land of Egypt, takes care, I mean, into the, land, the wilderness of Sinai and takes care of them for some 40 years. But he, they, he did that because when he sent them up over here into Canaan's land to spy out the land that he was going to give to them. He was giving them this land. They go up here and they come back, Ten, there are 12 spies that went over. Ten of them come back and say, we can't take the land. And actually, no, they couldn't take the land because it was never meant for them to take the land. Yahweh said he was going to give it to them, give it to them. And see, little words, and that's what our founder taught us to pay attention to, the words. They didn't have to take anything. Yahweh was going to give it to them. He's always fought their battles. He's always taken care of them. As the first speaker talked about, Joshua was here with them. So they weren't doing anything. Yahweh assembled them armies and things and Moses and the front man to make it look like that's what was going on. But he was always the one doing the work. Always. And that's something for us to go and understand. He's always doing the work. There's nothing, you know, we can do to, for, to, to earn salvation, to work up on it, to pay for it, for anything. So Yahweh had promised them. He had already made the promise to give them the land. So no, there was nothing. What did he tell them to do? They were just supposed to go up here and come back and say, yeah, the land is as Yahweh said. That's all they had to do. They didn't have to say, oh, we can't take it. No, they couldn't take it. No, because it was never meant for them to take it. It was always meant that Yahweh was going to give it to them. And Yahweh, and he showed that over and over. There was a, an incident where, um, was it, I don't know if it was the Battle of Jericho, but they, they walked around seven times or something like that, and the walls of Jericho fell. Um, there was an incident where they had... Uh, there was a battle that was going to be fought, and they had chose out like thousands and thousands of men, right? And, and, and then Yahweh dwindled it down to, what, 300, right? 300. So it was never meant for a large army to take, because who would take the glory? Who would take the honor for that? The people would. And not give the honor and the praise and the glory back to Yahweh for that. So Yahweh was never going to let anybody take his honor, take his glory, or make it like somebody else did this. So they could, So they came back with a false report. And because of that, Yahweh, so they were up here for 40 days, I think. 
it was, find out this land. And so they come back here with a false report, and Yahweh causes them to wander around in this wilderness for 40 years. And he did that to show what was in them. And eventually, that first generation that came up out of Egypt all died off, all except three. Yahweh always leaves a witness. And let's get that. Um, uh, Hebrews, I think it's the 11th chapter. There's always a witness. So if you're not sure of something, go look for a witness. The witnesses and the principles of the witnesses never change. Death, burial, resurrection on the third. Blood, water, spirit, and 40. Those principles never change, and they carry on to this very day. Hebrews 11? Um, or 12. We are compassed about. Whichever one is. I can never remember. It's 11 or 12. 12. I think 11 is faith, but okay. Wherefore, seeing we also so this are... This Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Yes, dear. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, starting at, at the first verse. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth, doth so easily beset us. So we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, and that's what the founders went about to do, to establish and to show us these witnesses that Yahweh laid out. These are witnesses that Yahweh gave us. Go on. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Yahshua, the author and finisher of our faith. Mm -hmm who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. So the joy that was set before him. This is joy. Mm -hmm. Joy now. To die a death like this, that he subjected himself to this. So for our sakes. Go on. He, he, he for, be, before him endured the cross, mm -hmm. despising the, uh, the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. for, for consider him. Okay. All I wanted to pick up was we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. So again, we don't have to, uh, you know, um, wonder if is a matter this way or that way. And if you're not sure, sometimes if you do have the question, you know something's weighing on your mind and you're not getting an answer right away, it's okay to wait on it. It's okay. Yahweh may have you just wait on it. There's a time, but you know that and that was the beauty of in coming into this organization, this class, because there'd be questions on your mind. You'd come to class and someone would get up on the floor and talk about it or answer your question. Or you could ask someone and they could help or you, you know, understand it or expound upon something. And but they but they always went a prescribed way. They went to the law. Then let's get Isaiah 8 and 20. Because this is the way that Yahweh set up for us to understand something about himself. Isaiah 8 and 20, mm -hmm. to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, this word it is because there is no light in them. So they have to speak according to this word. So Isaiah 8 and 20, and I think it says it here. And that's the beauty of this too. Yahweh, you know, set this up, this teaching up, and Dr. Kinley put scriptures and things on here so that people, you know, it would help with your teaching and help with your understanding. So here we have a pattern and plan. We have the law and the testimony in Isaiah 8 and 20. So if it goes according to this word, if it doesn't go according to this word, there's no light in them. So we have those principles again to the law, to the testimony, and then we have the fulfillment, and then we have um, Pentecost, you know, the, with Joshua bringing it into reality. What is the reality of it now? On this side of the cross, we're no longer on this side of the cross. This was never given to us anyway, and that was an eye-opener for me as the first speaker was talking about. There were things that just hit you. You know, in coming into this class that you had thought or been taught all your life or heard different things, and all those things became, you know, were dispelled. 
All of those things were slowly just dispelled, peeled away. But there's still some things, you know, that you might think or you might not understand. But, but all of it eventually gets peeled away, little by little. But these carnal ordinances, all this stuff was never given to us. To, if you weren't a physical Jew, you weren't involved in any of this. Right. That, that um, law was not given to us. You know, and the scriptures even talk about the Gentiles did by nature the things of the law. Because we have Yahweh imbued us all with a conscience. You know, you know right from wrong. You know, a little child, two years old, will know if he's not supposed to go in that cookie jar, and he does, that he's done something wrong. It doesn't take divine intervention or something like that, for he knows, and it's kind of old. Mommy said, don't do this, you know, and you do it. You, you know, so Yahweh's imbued us all with that. But here, this was never given to us. These carnal ordinances were never, ever given to us to follow. So we tried to keep this stuff, and that's one reason we couldn't, because they were never given to us, nor could the children of Israel, actually, the people they were given to. But that was to show what was in them, to show that you needed a Savior. We needed someone that could come in. And can you just, just think? How amazing it is that he could come in. He was the law giver, of course, but he could keep all these laws. He's the only one that could. All the laws, 613 our laws and ordinances that we talk about, you know, that and Yahshua could keep them all. He could, he fulfilled because he, it says he he came about to fulfill all righteousness, mm -hmm. all righteousness. So he was the only one that was able to fulfill all of these laws and ordinances that he had already set up. He set them up. You know, so we are no longer on this side of the cross. And you, you look at the world here, and that's where they're stuck. They're stuck. People are stuck on this side of the cross, not knowing or realizing or understanding that Yahshua's come in. He's fulfilled it. He's nailed these things, ordinances, these um, ordinances and laws and um, statues to the cross. He's nailed them. It says here, nailed to the cross. And this here is blacked out. When you blot something out with an ink stain, you'll no longer see it. It's blotted out. And he's nailed it to the cross and brought in, ushered in a spiritual kingdom age. So no longer are we worshiping Yahweh physically so. We, and we were never meant to anyway. But no longer can we worship him uh, physically so is spirit. Let's get John 4 and 24, I think it is. John 4 and 24. Yahweh is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Must. Must worship him in spirit and in truth. So it's no longer a physical, carnal, earthly way of worshiping your creator. You must worship him in spirit and in truth. We would not know what that was because we don't have spirit detectors with our five senses. There's nothing to detect spirit. We wouldn't know what spirit is. But because of this teaching and understanding, we now know that spirit is wisdom, intelligence, knowledge, Love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength. That's what Yahweh is. He doesn't possess these. This is what Yahweh is, in addition to many other attributes, you know. But this is what spirit is. Because over in Exodus, when they were instructed to build this tabernacle, it says, and let's get Exodus 33. And I know I'm jumping around a little bit. Yes, I think it's 32 or 33 where he um, puts the spirit in them. He doesn't leave it up to them. So what is the spirit of Yahweh? Okay, um, in 33, and Yahweh said, this is Exodus 33 and the first verse. And Yahweh said unto Moses, depart and go up hence. No, it's 32. Uh -huh. I think it's 31 maybe. 31. 31. Uh, 31. Uh, of the spirit of Elohim? Yes. yes. It's 31. 31. Uh, okay. That's really This is Exodus 31 in the first verse. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name 
Be Bezalel, Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Ur, and the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of Elohim, in wisdom and in an understanding, and in knowledge, mm -hmm. and in all manner so of So in workmanship. wisdom and then. Wisdom and an understanding. Understanding. And in knowledge. And in knowledge, intelligence, understanding. And in all manner of workmanship. And in all manner of workmanship. Yahweh did that. He did that with the children of Israel to build this tabernacle. He did it with the children of Israel to build those, to, to uh, create or make those garments of beauty and glory for the priesthood. Also, it says in there too, and I can find it later for you, where Yahweh filled those people with the spirit of Yahweh and workmanship and wisdom and knowledge and intelligence. Excuse me. So that they did it according to Yahweh's specifications and not their own. Because all our thoughts, theories, and concepts, uh, let's get Isaiah 55. That's all in um, 31. Mm -hmm. There's many places where it's saying to tell you where Yahweh filled the 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 people with the spirit of Yahweh to carry out his in uh, pattern and plan of salvation. And these are witnesses we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. And when you say compassed about, that's every sign. In any which way you turn, you're going to find a witness to Yahweh. Any which way you turn, you're going to find it. witnesses out there. To the law and to the testimony. So law, prophets, fulfillment. Yeah. 55 and 7, I think it is. Is it 55 and 6? 6 or 7? 6. Yeah. six, 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 six. Okay. This is, uh, I think. So this is the way it was prior to, um, and then if you can, somebody can give me Acts um, 17, I think it is. Okay. I have um, Isaiah 55, 55 and 6. 6. Seek ye Yahweh while he may Seek be found. Seek ye Yahweh while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto Yahweh. And he will have mercy upon him and to our Elohim. For he will abundantly pardon but my thoughts are not your thoughts. My thoughts are not your thoughts. This is what Yahweh is saying. Yeah. Neither are your ways. And neither are your ways. My ways. My ways. ways. Yahweh. Give me numbers. I think it is uh, numbers. You made his ways known unto Moses and his acts. You stay here, please. Okay. Um, okay. Go on, please. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher So do you feel how high that is? As, as, say that, read that again for me. For mm -hmm. as the heavens are as higher than the earth, earth, so are my ways higher, higher than your ways. ways. So are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your and thoughts. And my thoughts than your thoughts. And the founder said, when we, you know, coming into this organization, into this class, we didn't have a right thought. We didn't have one right thought about our creator prior coming in. And that's a hard pill to, to, to swallow. You know, it's just like when Yahshua says to the disciples, eat my blood, drink my, um, eat, eat my body, drink my blood. And they said, this is a hard saying. Who can do it? You know, that's a hard saying because you think you have a right thought about your creator. How can you not have a right thought about your creator? You know, but Yahweh says, you, you know, uh, the founder said, you didn't have, we didn't have a right thought about our creator. Go on. Is there more? For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returneth not hither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, right. but it shall accomplish that, that which I, I please. Mm -hmm. And it shall pros prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. And the founder, I mean not the founder, and, and the first speaker was, you know, uh, talking to us about, you, you know, this is the word of Yahweh. And this is the word that we know now. This is the word that Yahweh is talking about when he talks about the word. 
and this word was sent forth. He says, Joshua says, uh, you know, I come in my father's name, or I come to do the will of the father. I come to do the will of the one that sent me. So this is Yahweh Elohim here, carrying out the will of his father. And he, um, and he, he um, read that again a little bit, the last part when you said. The last um, part, I come to do. He and so shall my word be, be you know, that goeth forth out of my, my mouth. mouth. It shall not return unto to me void. Right, it won't return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I choose. And here, it's not void. He didn't come out this way. He's alone and by himself. He's not returning. To, he's not returning unto the Father alone and by himself. And it shall prosper in the thing. Where, where to I sent it. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it by imbuing us with his wisdom, intelligence, and knowledge, love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength. Putting those attributes right within us so that we can get an understanding of him as he really is and actually exists and being able to worship him that way. I think I had numbers, a couple of those spots called, right? Numbers? That sounds like mm -hmm. seven. He made known his ways unto, unto Moses, Moses and his acts unto the children yep. of Israel. He made way, he made he made known his ways unto Moses, and Moses was carrying those out, and his acts unto the children of Israel. That's where you get Acts, you know, too. It shows um, I think it's in um is it Chronicles? I think that kind of gives a history. Some of those books give histories of the children of Israel and just reiterates some of the things that they had done and been through and what Yahweh, you know, going according to Yahweh's pattern or plan of salvation. And then Numbers, was it? Numbers. Was it? Um, Acts, you call it going to? Yes, Acts. Acts 17. Acts 17, yes. 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 Thank you. Do you want Acts 20, 17 and 24? I think so. I wonder where he went that. Is that coming up? Or was it before 17? Uh, 30. 30. Yeah, okay. Okay. You can start where you were then, 24. Thank you. Yahweh, who made the world and all things in it, seeing that he is Yahweh of heaven and earth. Well, and that first speaker talked about that. I'm sorry to try, I'm okay. to interrupt. Okay. So the first speaker talked about Yahweh that made the world, and he, uh, we didn't get it, but let's pick up Colossians 1 and 15. So Yahweh that made the world and all things in, go on. <laughs> seeing that he's Yahweh of heaven and earth dwell not in temples made with hands. He doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. And as I've mentioned many times before, and I, I ride through the neighborhoods because I'm actually looking for something, but um, the, the, a church, two and three churches in one area, one block, next door to each other. I've seen that right next door to each other. I don't even know how they park because <laughs> it was right space. Down the street from my house. Like three churches. Churches, right back to back. But he's not worshipped, and they're reading this Bible. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is not worshipped, or the Lord God, or whoever is not worshipped, what? With men's hands. With men's hands, as though he, as though he needed anything. Yeah. What does he need? What does Yahweh need with our money? What? What? He's spirit. <laughs> Yahweh is spirit. Them that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. I don't know of any spiritual money. <laughs> if there's some, I'd like to have some, right? And people jumped all on that coin bit thing, right? And look what happened. It's fake. It's not real. And people lost a lot with this here stuff. But they jump on every whip, every, you know, go on. Sandy give it to all life and breath mm -hmm. and all things. He give it to all life and breath and all things. And had made one. And made of one blood all nation of man to dwell on the face of the earth, and had determined the times before He's appointed. He's the time and determined the times before appointed. And the bounds of their habitation. And the bounds of their habitation. That they should seek Yahweh, and perhaps they might go after him and find him, though he is not far from every. He's not far from every one of us. He's not above the sun, moon, stars. We come to know and understand that he doesn't dwell up here in the clouds somewhere. Or up in the um, atmosphere, Yahweh is everything. You know, he's everything. 
but go on. For in him we live and move and have our being. In him, just as this cloud is drawn all around the edges of this chart, in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own force have said, for we are also his offspring. We are his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of Yahweh, we ought not to think that the the supernal nature is like gold or silver or stone mm -hmm. carved on art and man devices. In the times of this given, Yahweh winked at, but now command all men everywhere to repent. And there was a time Yahweh winked at man's ignorance. Mm -hmm. There was a time. But now he's commanded all men everywhere to repent. And what does repent mean? People yeah. think, oh, uh, it just means change your mind. But what do we think? What is man made it to be? Oh, you got to do the sign of the cross. Oh, you got to give up cigarettes. Oh, you got to give up meat. Oh, you got to give up chocolate or something. What does God? What does God care about that? Whether you eat chocolate or not? What? Are, come on. Or meat or you know? <laughs> what, what kind of a God do you have? If He cares about whether you're eating chocolate, <laughs> and you're going to give it up for forty days? Does it make any sense? No, but we fell into these things because we didn't know. We had, we had a lack of knowledge. We had a lack of understanding of our Creator. You know, but all that stuff now we can kind of chuckle at, you know, because it doesn't make any sense. But it's serious out here to some people. I mean, they live and die by this stuff, mm -hmm. you know? But Thanks be to Yahweh. Was there anything else holding? No, so in the times of this ignorance, like Yahweh winked at. So yes, hit that real quick. Marcus 15. Who, this is 16. The, the 16th verse. Oh, 15. I'm sorry. Okay. Who is the image of the invisible L? Who is the image of the invisible L? The first cause of the all first creation. The first cause of all creation. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and, and for, him. for him. By him and for him. All things that were created were created by him and for him. And that's why, you know, this, this, we're able to give him the honor, the praise, and the glory, you know, that he deserves when we realize that. When Yahweh has imbued us with a little bit of wisdom, a little bit of intelligence and knowledge, love and beauty and justice and foundation and power and strength, these are the attributes we want in, in, um, in us. You know, as Joshua talks about, I and you, and you and me, and I, you know. So this is what this teaching is about and where, um, wh why we come. So to understand our creator and to be able to worship him. Let me say it this way, to be able to worship him as he really is and actually exists. And give him the honor, the praise, and the glory. And with that, I'll just say hallelujah and thank you for the time. Like almost every class, 
he would spend at least a little bit of time warning people that you are now down at the end of an age. Okay, and I know I talked about this recently, but I really think, you see, that, that you know, like I said, you know, with our class, I mean, that we, that we had, I mean, it was just everyday folks and stuff like that, and he would get up there every class and say, you've got to come to class. You, you got to try to know everything you can. And when you leave here, don't leave class here, you see, or really the teaching, if I can put it that way. Bring it with you. It should be, you know, uh, it talks about, um, uh, oh Yahweh, I love thy law. Do um, you know what that is? Um, and the walking in the way and stuff like that. Um, if you could find that for me. And uh, let's go, let's, let's, uh, while you're finding that part, go, go to the scripture reading, okay? Now, uh, we're going to first read what the topic is for um, the convention coming up. So it's 119. And that's the 11th verse, okay? And then we're going to go back up to the first verse and, and, and put it in context. Because, you see, you have back here, okay, Yahweh. You see, uh, uh, Yahweh uh, uh, coming into that visionary shape and form as Yahweh Elohim. And when he did that, the founders, the, the way the founder put it was, is that Yahweh went out of the creating business. Mm -hmm. All right? When he made Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh pure spirit, you see, that is in his ontological perfection, okay, is, is referred to, you see, not me. Dr. Kinley had a sixth grade education. How many people with a sixth grade education do you know of that use words like ontological perfection? Okay? You see, when he received that Holy Spirit, all right, he got he got it all at once. Okay? Now we come down into class, all right? And we get it by piecemeal. We get it little by little. That, that when you come into class and you first see something, it's not your intellect. Okay? It has nothing to do with how smart you are or how sharp you are. If you see anything, that is Yahshua showing it to you. And, and if you want a witness for that one, I have a lifetime of witnesses of trying to tell people about the gospel. And, 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 the, and most of them, I can't even get past a name. They can't give up their Jesus, you see. They don't care that it's not the truth. They don't care that it's a lie. And the thing of it is, is here's the mean dean. They're not getting away with it. You see, this we are deadly serious about this thing. We are here to save people's souls. This is like a spiritual ER, okay? And we're getting paddles out, one prophets, and we're not afraid to use them. You see, I mean that's what I mean. If you if you're coding, <laughs> you see. I have, I have a friend at work, okay, they, they put up those paddles everywhere now, where, where I work, okay, even in the research building, I mean, well, I, you know, and what, if your research isn't working, you're going to code, I don't know, but, you see, I, I, I went to my friend Doug, and I said, hey Doug, mind if I try the paddles on you, I want to see if they work, now, now, he wouldn't let me, but, if he was on ground, and something was wrong with his heart, He'd be like, yeah, give them to me, you see. Now you come down to class, you see, we're going to give, we're going to give the truth to you, you see, and, and, and we're not going to hold back because your soul is at stake. My soul is at stake. And, and, and look, at the founder, he got, he got this thing all at once, like I said. We're getting a piecemeal. And you know what? He said that we are better than he is. 
Because we're getting it by faith. You see? We didn't... Look at it. He was brought back here at this mountain. Okay? And, 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 and you can read about, you can see, the, the, the description of what he went through when he had his vision. See, he talked about being drawn back. You see? And he found himself, you see, he wasn't in a physical body. He was back here with Moses. And he was, you see, communing with Yahweh Elohim. And Yahweh Elohim wasn't using words. He would think it. And the founder would hear it. You see? I mean, I want that, right? <laughs> you see, he said, if you didn't know H.C. Kinley, see, his name is Henry Clifford Kinley, if you didn't know H.C. Kinley before the vision, you never knew H.C. Kinley. Because, you see, that old, you see, uh, uh, carnally minded man, you see, now, now he was a preacher in the, in, the, in the holiness church, he was a healer, and he was, he was a renowned speaker even in that church, and he was falsely accused and was cast out, and he spent days, you see, and weeks, and I don't know how long, you see, you see and, and found quiet places where he could do just you know, wonder, why did this happen to me? It was his life at that time. That's what he was all about, you see. And he would, he would you know, ask Yahweh, why, you know, why is this happening? What is going on, you see? And, and, and the answer to that, you see, was when Yahweh took him and gave him that vision and revelation. Now, what happened was, is that he, 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 uh, uh, he passed out. Okay? And then his family picked him up and brought him up into the upper story of the house. See? Just like Moses was brought to an elevated place, the founder was brought up, you see, physically at an elevated place. But where, you see, what he saw, you see, <laughs> was more than just the bedroom that they put him in. Okay? Now he received... A divine vision and revelation. Okay? See that Yahshua just stepped right into that body and he got it instantaneously. Okay? Now, he said, now, now that sounds great. Doesn't that sound great? To be one with the Creator in an instant of time. You see? But that's not how he's working it with us. Alright? We are getting it piecemeal. And you know what he said? He said that we were better than he was. Because we're getting it by faith. You see? Faith is a hard thing. You see? You, you, have, you have faith in the government? <laughs> you can't even have faith in your neighbor. Look down there in Texas. Guy has a couple drinks, mm -hmm. holds out a gun, mm -hmm. kills five people, including a child. Mm -hmm. This is happening more and more and more and more. Mm -hmm. is it, Carol, weren't you saying that there was a shooting in Zephyr Hills? Yeah. Zephyr you see, Hills. That's yeah. like two miles from my house. Yes, station. You know? The, 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 mm -hmm. the, the Central Valley in California, a century ago, was a lake. It's getting filled again because of the, 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 the change in the climate. They don't know what to do with this water. You see, when that, when that, snow, when that snow starts melting, they don't know what they're going to do. You see? I mean, bomb cyclones. Okay? Who ever heard of a bomb cyclone before recent times. It's a type of storm. These, see, the, 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 the creation has changed. The, 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 the climate has changed. And, it, and it's not getting better. It's getting worse. You see? Starvation is more rampant now than it's ever been. There are wars everywhere. Just move to Texas. 
<laughs> Everybody's shooting everybody in Texas. Okay? See? It, folks, we are down at perilous times. You see? Now, Romans 1, 19 and 20. Read that for me, please. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. It's manifest in them. Go for ahead. Yahweh has shown it unto uh -huh. them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Now, the invisible things of him, his wisdom, his intelligence, his knowledge, his love, beauty, justice, his foundation, power, and strength, these attributes, the, you see, this spirit of Yahweh, go ahead. For the invisible things of him. These invisible things of him. From the creation of the world. Right from the creation of the world. Are clearly seen. Are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made. You see, it's understood by the things that he has made. You see, this creation that we're living in. You see, it's, if you, you see, the, the, the other thing the mean being always told us <laughs> was to keep your eyes on the news. Because the physical reveals the spiritual. Mother Earth is dying, folks. We are choking her to death with carbon dioxide and everything else that is spewing out of the, the factories and the, the homes and the oceans are... The oceans, the, the, the Atlantic Ocean now, is covered by sargasso weed. Have you heard about this? It's the size of a continent. That's how much sargasso weed is forming in the Atlantic Ocean. This is something that's never happened before. And it's choking the life out of the ocean. You see? Where do we get our oxygen from? We get it from mostly from the ocean and the life in the ocean. You see? Now, see, there was a thing, okay, about uh, the, the Amazon and how that the forests are, are and, and they said that those are the lungs of the earth and they're being destroyed. Okay, but I heard another scientist say, no, that's really, that, that is true, that, you see, that they are part of, of that in the creation that's producing the oxygen. Okay, see, we don't have the technology to take the carbon dioxide out. They're working on that. The, 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 the man or woman that discovers a way to suck the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere is going to be richer than Bill Gates. Okay? You see? But there doesn't seem to be any means to do this. The only way it can be done is by the things that Yahweh has created, including the life in the oceans, the life in the forests, you see, the grass, all the stuff. See, Yahweh has provided the means, you see, but, the, but mankind, you see... You know, I don't mean to be disgusting, but, you know, mankind is just defecating on this creation from a, from a, from a, 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 a natural standpoint. He's poisoning it. He's destroying it. You see? This, see, now look at The physical reveals the spiritual. This creation folks, is dying. It's coming to an end. We are down to the end of an age. You see, now I, I am surprised that I have lived as long as I have. You see, because, you see, the timing of this thing, look at, look at, uh, uh, one day with Yahweh is a thousand years. Can you find that for me, please? And actually, while you get that, let's let's start here at, at the scripture reading, okay? That's the scripture reading. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me? <laughs> Excuse me. It's in the scripture reading. Oh, it's in the scripture reading? Second reading. Oh, okay. Okay, so just start at one minute, okay? okay. 
This is uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. Uh -huh. The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in those which I stare at. No, so three, three, and one. three and one. Yes. Three and one. Yeah. That's where she was. Yeah, that's where she was. Yeah, so he wants to stir up your pure minds. Your minds by, by way of remembrance. See, you, that's what we come to class for, is to have our minds stirred up, you see, by way of remembrance. That's why we go through these principles over and over and over again. I never grow tired of it. It's like your favorite movie or your favorite song, you see. Go ahead. That you may be mindful of, of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, you see, and of the commandment of of us, the the apostles, of the redeemer and savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, scoffers, go ahead, walking after their own lusts. Look at people don't believe it. You know, all the all the, the 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 wars that are going on. I mean, look at over there in, in Russia, in Ukraine. Okay, I have a Ukrainian friend that I work with. She's a scientist uh, uh, that, that that I work with, and and those people are determined to fight off. You see, the Russians. And the Russians, you see, uh, uh, we don't have that charge. That's, they are, you see, part of that mystery of iniquity. Mm -hmm. Okay? And Satan's house has been divided against itself for years because it was a Russian agent, remember, that shot uh, uh, Pope John Paul. You see? And, it, and, it, and, and you see, it, it was really the Catholic Church and what they have done that brought down, you see, Russia also, you see, from a political standpoint. Now, it's resurrected, okay? And we got Putin, okay? <laughs> you see? And, 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 and look at it. I He is an insane person. <laughs> he is nothing but a raw, ugly Satanic spirit, you see, and this man would think nothing of dropping nuclear weapons, either the kind that explode or what they call dirty bombs, and which would basically make Ukraine uninhabitable, you see, and could possibly start a world war. You see, there are things going on in this creation, folks, that there are dire. You see? <sighs> Go ahead, please. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lusts. Walking after their own lusts. You see? Yes. You try to tell somebody about the truth. Right. Okay? I, look at all this stuff, I know doom and gloom and stuff like that. Here's the fact of the matter. These bodies, okay, only last so long. If they cleaned up the atmosphere, which can't happen, okay, you, you know why it's so bad. It's because of the greed of mankind. See, they think nothing of, you see, of, of, of polluting the, the place that they live, you see. But that physical pollution is a type and a shadow of this spiritual pollution that's going on. These scoffers, okay, you try to tell somebody about class, you see, go on the internet and look up ID Mark. There's all kinds of stuff out there disrespecting this teaching. Go ahead. And saying, where is the promise of this coming? Now look at, he's talking about, you see, Yahshua, you see, now, now first of all, okay, Yahshua, you see, he went through his ministry, 
And you know what he was doing the whole time was fulfilling this old covenant. He was fulfilling water baptism. He was fulfilling Lord's suppers. He was fulfilling, you see, uh, 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 baptisms and, and all those things that were under that old law. He was fulfilling and finishing it. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, all the law did, you see, and this is in your scriptures, it all it did, it didn't stop people from doing things. You see, adultery and all those other kind of stuff, you see, it didn't cause them to behave. It just made their sin, as, as it says in your scriptures, more exceeding sinful. You see? Like if you're, if you, you take a kid, a kid's playing with something they shouldn't be playing with. And they're thinking that's nothing of it. And you tell them, oh no, no, don't touch that. All of a sudden, that thing became real attractive. <laughs> they want nothing but. And as soon as you leave the room, what are they going to do? <laughs> you see, all that law did was it didn't, it, it, I mean, I don't want to point fingers at anybody. Okay, so I'll just point them all at myself. Okay, it never stopped me from doing a damn thing. You see, I pretty much, you see, blew through the Ten Commandments except for one, okay? And, 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 and you know, there were 600 and something ordinances. This law was designed to be impossible for a carnal mind to keep. You see? Now, so people come into class, and they get a little bit of understanding under their belt, and they think they're going to keep it. And they get themselves deluded into keeping it. Why don't you just, you see, give all glory to Yahshua and just count on his mercy. Count on, you see, his love. Count on the promise that he made. Look at, have you ever have you ever made a promise to an individual, you see, and, and they say, oh, you won't do that. You see, you can't make that promise. You see, he made a promise. He brought in this creation, okay? And, and, and look, it, I want to finish that thing with Dr. Kenley. You see, what he got, we are getting piecemeal. We're getting the same thing. Someone asked Dr. Kinley, they said, I want a vision like you. And he pointed at the church and said, here, help yourself. You see, it's important. It's Okay, it is life and death. That's how important it is to do, you see, to, to come to class and to get a knowledge and understanding. You see, that's how important it is. You see, to be here whenever you can. And when you're not here, take it home with you. Don't just be at class when you're here. Open up a book. Open up a transcript. You see, read the scriptures. You see, get someone on the phone and say, hey, i got a question about something. Or, or hey, what, you, you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You see, from a natural standpoint, okay, people get married. And when they get married, they make a commitment. All right. They, they they don't get on their they, they they don't do the vow and say, well, most of the time I promise. <laughs> okay. You see, to love on and obey. Okay. Love. See, people have no problem with love part. Okay. The honor. Okay. But they obey. <laughs> you see. Yeah. It's just. But that's what we should be doing to Yah with Yahweh. This is a marriage. You see, this is a committed relationship that you are involved here in. Okay. Now, keep reading. Knowing this first, that there shall be knowing this first, 
first. Mm -hmm. But they shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust. Now we know we're down at the end of an age. Look at back here, Yahweh brought in this creation, okay? Really, actually, he showed it to Moses. It was actually brought in instantaneously, okay? And then science backs that up, okay? The Big Bang Theory says that the universe came into existence instantaneously, all right? So even science backs it up. But you see, man, or, or, or Yahweh, made, brought the sun in on the fourth day. Now look at it. He brought in the plant life on the third day. <laughs> Don't plants need the sun? Mm -hmm. You see, but this was a vision that, that, that was given to Moses. Okay? It, you see, it, it, he just slowed it down for Moses. Okay? Put it in slow Moses. Okay? <laughs> you see, and that sun was placed in the, in the sky on the fourth day. Now look at it. You had back here in the tabernacle, you had seven branches. But the fourth branch, and I think someone brought this out recently, that fourth branch is where the oil went into. This was not a candle. It's called a candlestick in your scriptures. That's a misnomer. You see, it was an oil lamp. Okay? And it had seven branches. And the way that it was filled, because it was hollow, these branches were hollow, the way that it was filled was that the oil was poured into that fourth branch so that all the other branches got their oil from that fourth branch. Now that oil is symbolic of, you see, just like his holy anointing oil, is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now Yahshua, he is that Holy Spirit. He is that oil. You see, and he he was placed, you see, so, so you have that fourth branch, you have the fourth day, the sun was placed in the sky. So Yahshua comes in, you see, see, on the fourth day. Okay? Now, we got a fifth and a sixth day. Okay? Now, you have Adam was made, or man was made, in the sixth day. Now, there's a scripture that says that the end is declared from the beginning. So you go back to Moses' vision. This was the beginning. You see, if man was placed in the earth plane on the sixth day, okay, he has to be taken out on the sixth day. Or in other words, this creation is coming down to a close. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I need two more hours. Okay. Um, but, but I will take two more hours. Okay. Let's, let's skip on that. So, so look at him. He's, he's about ready to take this thing out. You see, you can, you, can, uh, you can go through the math. I can go through the math with you. You see, but we are down to the end, okay? And, 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 and you see, even if we're, it, let, let's, let's say we're wrong about that. You are going to come to an end. Sooner or later, okay? We're all going to die, all right? Now, don't procrastinate. Don't, well, I'll get to Yahweh later. See, I've seen people do that. They'll come down to class, and they'll leave, and they'll think, well, I'll, I'll, I'll be back sometime in the future and stuff like that. You see, that, that just isn't going to work. You see? And, and, okay, keep reading. Where is the promise of this coming? Where, see, people, people come into class and they get tired. They say, where is the promise of his coming? Go ahead. For since the Father fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Now that's a lie. Things are not continuing like they did from the beginning of the creation. They are ramping up and getting worse. 
Go ahead. For this, they willingly are ignorant. Now they're willingly ignorant. They are willfully ignoring it. Go ahead. That by the word of Yahweh, the heavens were of old, uh -huh. and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Okay, go ahead. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Now look at, you had an end of the world back here with Noah in the flood. And there's actually geological evidence for this. Mm -hmm. And people have, have, uh, see, have given a, an account of seeing that ark on Mount Ararat. You see, it's in a place where you can't get to. All right, but go ahead. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, uh -huh. reserved unto fire. You I see, this whole creation is just reserved unto fire, and not. I'm not talking nuclear bombs. I'm not. I, I'm talking. You see, a real fire, and that's the fire of Yahweh. It's going to be completely consumed, and the only way to escape is to be in Him. To be in that body. Because the rest of it is toast. Go ahead. Against the day of judgment and uh -huh. perdition of wicked men. And perdition of wicked men. You see, now, now you read that thing and you think, oh, well, that, that's, that's the guy who uh, shot the people in Texas. Well, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, but that's someone also that does not have an understanding of Yahweh and his purpose and plan. They're just, they can't help it but be wicked. Okay, go ahead. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, uh -huh. that one day is with Yahweh as a thousand years. Now skip down to 10 for me, please. We already got through that one day is But the day years. of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night. Now look at it. The ending of this creation is going to come as a thief in the night. Go ahead. In which the heavens shall pass away. You see, this whole creation is going to come to an end. And it's going to go back into pure spirit. Go ahead. With a great noise, uh -huh. and the elements shall melt with vervent heat, and earth also, and the works that are... Therein shall be burned up. Okay, go ahead. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Now see, see you came, you've come down to these classes and you've heard these lectures and you've seen the evidence provided. And if it's not enough, keep coming back. We'll give you more. You see, but seeing this, go ahead. What manner of persons? What manner of persons are? Ye to be, are ye to be, in right. all holy conduct, in all holy conduct, and righteousness, and righteousness. That's the topic for the conference. You see, and it's a great topic because look at what Miguel does is his business. You see, I gotta get me cleaned up, and the only way that that can happen is through the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. That we're all, you see, he's getting rid of hate and anger and malice, you see, and he's replacing those things with love and beauty and justice. And this is a process that's going on. And we're getting it piecemeal, just like the founder got it all at once. And I know I'm, I'm out of time. But, uh, I got through about a third of what I wanted to say. Okay. But, folks, this is deadly serious. This is, we're not playing church down here. You see, come to class. Learn everything you can. Be diligent. You see, you see, seek Yahweh with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. And look, at, it'll pay off. Yes. You see, people spend a lot of money on pills because they're, they got anxiety. They got this problem. They got that problem. You see, 
then, then everybody out here is messed up. Okay? You, you, you talk to someone for 10 minutes and you go, wow, I thought I was bad. <laughs> you know? So anyways, we can talk about this some more, but we are coming down to an end of an age, and you've got to get your house in order, okay? But Yahshua has to do it. Okay, so I, I hope you've got something out of it. Jefferson High School. Um, I'll be sending out emails for a while on that. I don't have the address memorized. And then we have our Wednesday Zoom from 7 to 9. Let's all stand and be dismissed with the doxology. Take from the last couple verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise element of our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, Belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.